Inside our FX Haley RBD, we have a top network that is called Wedge RBD Seams. Let's dive inside. And here, all we do is we can uh, create a simple wedge. We call it Seed. And right now, I'm creating 20 wedges. You can create as many of you, as you want. I told you this simulation of the helicopter is maybe one, one and a half minutes long. So you can create you know, 20 different seams, go get your coffee, come back and have different 20 seams to choose from. And after that, we are grabbing a null called out Haley RBD points to cache. Let me show you this null that was connected to our solver. Disregard the errors, it just was trying to compute earlier. I escaped it. I'm bringing in one of those caches here. You can see this is our constraints and the points. We're grabbing this null and saying, go and compute this null, considering our seed value, and I would put the files in this location, geocache, Haley RBD cache, and then we have a folder per wedge, 20 wedges, 20 folders, 20 different seams. And where do we use this seed is here. You can see I have a one node that was bypassed before. It is called attribute adjust vector for velocity. And here the seed is entered in the seed parameter. So every time a new wedge is going to run, this value is going to get updated. And you will have those velocity values changed based on the seed. So if you want to wedge your simulation, you bypass this uh, below for the selected wedge and you turn on this velocity instead. Okay. After that, after you ran 20 or so, however many wedges you want, what you will have is you will have those caches. And then um, there are a lot of tutorials online how you can even render them, uh, make a contact sheet, and uh, then create a contact sheet through Houdini. I actually did it myself in Nuke, just because I was already working a Nuke script, I needed it really fast and it took me maybe two and a half minutes to set up everything. But uh, if you want, you can, of course, do all of that in Houdini. So after you have those uh, wedges and you selected one that you really like, uh, then you can go bring a file cache node and you can uh, bring an explicit wedge that you chose bring it in, you see in my switch, I'm switching to this exact cache, so I'm not reading my wedges anymore, and I will continue working with this wedge. But uh, following this logic, we will always know where this wedge came from. This is it for the helicopter destruction. Next step, what we need to do is we need to check if uh, all our motion blur and textures are working properly in lobs before we continue. Let's go again into our render heli RBD and let's give ourselves a reminder how things work here. We have a switch where between the frames 1431 and uh, 32, it switches between the original geometry that was just animated and it switches uh, to the broken geometry. After that, we created earlier, remember, a name for the glass for lobs and that's it. Uh, there is nothing else um, really interesting here. So let's press 2 on the keyboard. Let's go to our lobs, and we are interested in this lob test 006. One thing you will see, I made a note here, is that here on Heli RBD 2, before, uh, in the primitive path, which controls how things are going to be named here in Solaris, I had dollar dollar OS here before. So it was naming things based on the name of the node. But because I have a bunch of Heli RBDs now and they're starting to be uh, Heli RBD 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, now I'm just hard coding it here because th this is a very simple uh, setup, so it's okay to do that. We have our RBD coming in, we have our materials assigned, and we can check everything through our Karma XP unit. Okay, so if I zoom in a little bit, we will notice that it looks like we have no motion blur whatsoever, but we've gone through it already and uh, we can use our motion blur uh, node in lobs, which will give us proper motion blur on the pieces and on the propellers. I'm giving it a second, it's computing, and right away we can see, yes, it looks like we have proper motion blur, you see on the propellers, on the pieces. Let's take a snapshot, and I'm gonna, going to open my gallery. 
And one thing that was added in Houdini 20 and I really, really, really like is now we have the whole stats panel. Let me just expand it a little bit. And we can very well see, because I'm using Karma XPU, we can see if uh, the size of the caches was enough for my GPU or it spilled onto CPU. We can see how many resources were spent on what, how much time everything took, how much memory was loaded, and so on. I find it really, really useful, and I use the stats all the time. Okay, our uh, motion blur is working, materials are coming through, textures are working. We are good to move on to the explosion. 